Would you have supported the Senate bill that it seemed President Trump effectively killed by coming out against it? It's why I decided to run for the Senate, actually. I had never given any consideration to this race. I'd said a hundred times I wasn't, I didn't aspire to become a senator. I, I uh, didn't need a job. I wasn't looking for another title. But a couple, three weeks ago on a Wednesday night when I saw uh, a real solution to uh, secure the border and provide funding for Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan, something that most of the Republican senators had said was all those things were important, and uh, they were they were told to vote against what they believed in, and uh, maybe frustrated and angry enough to say, I think I'm going to go down there and try to do something about this. Former Maryland Governor Republican Larry Hogan explaining why he decided to jump into the Maryland Senate race. That conversation took place yesterday during MSNBC Live, a new event series featuring in-person conversations with newsmakers. And joining us now, the host and creative director of MSNBC Live, Luke Russert. Luke, you didn't tell Pleasure me. Pleasure to this be is here, a... Mika. Good morning. How it. are you? I'm great, and I love this concept. Uh, tell us more about it. Before we get into the Hogan interview, what are you doing? Well, the first thing is we have to book you to appear because you are the it. star power that we need. So keep your phone <laughs> handy. But essentially what we're trying to do is have thoughtful conversations, solutions-based conversations in person with some of the leading newsmakers of the day and really try to get to a place of, listen, we want to foster a connection to deal with some of the most vexing issues facing in America. Uh, often the most partisan ideas aren't the best. When you have people in a room, they come together and they have a conversation. Like it happened in America for many, many years, solutions come out of that, whether it's public-private partnerships, whether it's people in the activist space, hearing people out, not seeing everybody as an enemy and getting to a place of what can be done to solve some of these most challenging things that our country faces. So that's really what our core of it is at MSNBC Live. We're taking it around the country, God willing. Oh, and we want to bring in some of our contributors and some of our best MSNBC talent to help foster these conversations with people uh, around the country. OK, Simone and I want to do a Know Your Value event. Yes. So, yes. Um, Simon, Simone was there us. yesterday. Yeah. She was yeah. great. She had a wonderful she, time. Thanks for coming, so Simone. Yeah. My pleasure. It was an amazing event, Luke. And I think what was so great about it is bringing all of these different people together. Uh, Kornacki was at the big board giving a preview. And what I heard from folks is that they just really, they want to know more. Larry Hogan broke a little news yesterday. I didn't know that's that was the impetus for him getting in. So I, I, I thought it was a really engaging conversation. And we also heard from Quentin Folks from the Biden campaign. Wow. So it was well timed. You know, what's so cool about this, Luke, is that we have been all all sort of moving to remote uh, post COVID. I think COVID, in fact, a lot of kids were trying to get them out of their houses. So this is good um, that you're sort of like trying to promote that connection that we're, where things really can happen when we're together in a room. There is a real value, I think, post pandemic in gathering again. And I was fortunate in the last year to go on a book tour for my memoir, Look For Me There. And I got to meet a lot of people around the country. And the same thing I heard everywhere was, you know, we are a lot more alike than we are different. And when you're in a room and you have those connections, that value and those ethos comes through. Yeah. And we have at, at MSNBC the ability to foster these conversations. I mean, yesterday we had Sophia Bush, the famous actress with her business partner, Naomi Bax, come in and talk about how women and minorities often don't get enough capital to launch successful businesses and what can be done to change that. And then you have Steve Kornacki on with the magic map. And then you have Jen Psaki and Quentin Folks about the Biden campaign and what they have to overcome. And then Larry Hogan saying to me equivocally, he will not support Donald Trump under any circumstances. So you really have a boatload of fascinating, interesting conversations, which touches on all these different things that America is dealing with, but gets to a place where there are solutions and there's people who want to work to achieve uh, real tangible positive results. Mike Barnacle, the kids are all grown up. Look, look at this. <laughs> Barnacle is another Luke. tough booking. Bar yeah, yeah. Mike Barnacle is a very tough booking too. Oh, uh, you'll never get them. You don't have to face <laughs> ball, maybe. They are Not a all, chance. They, they are all grown up. Look, what, what's the logistical plan here for this venue? Do you travel? Do you go different places? How's it going to work? 
I think our goal is to really get it around the country. If it worked out, I would love to have people in Cleveland or Buffalo be able to meet Mike Barnacle in person. Mm -hmm. I think we'll start off Wonderful. in Washington and New York, where our talent <laughs> is most easily accessible. But I think down the line, one of the more value adds is that, you know, people want to meet who they see on TV. They want to be in the same room as them. And they also want to see, I think, that the thoughtful uh, conversations that don't happen when there's a red blinking light. As you know, and as, yes. as Mika, you've done a lot of those events. There's a sort of spontaneity where totally. people feel more comfortable. It's a lunch setting. It's a dinner setting. We might even have a cocktail setting and hear some really interesting stuff down the line. So that's really the goal, though. But, yeah, Mike, I think there is real value and getting things out of D.C. outside of the Acela Corridor, and that is ultimately my goal with this uh, with this project. Jonathan Lemire. Michael Cometh, there's free food, Luke. Um, let's talk a little bit more about your interview yesterday with Governor Hogan. Uh, you know, who he toyed with the idea of perhaps running as a third-party candidate for president. No labels, was openly flirting with him. He's opted against that, but going for the Senate in instead. Tell us more about what he sees as his path. I thought it was really interesting that he said that the thing that was a catalyst for him to run for Senate was a phone call from former President Bush saying we need more independent minded leaders. And then also that he was upset that the Senate GOP and Donald Trump killed that bipartisan bill. But Jonathan, you're absolutely right. The immigration bill, rather. But you're absolutely right. Maryland is a two to one Democratic state. Federal races, you see a lot more tribal partisan politics. So he has a real uphill battle. But he unequivocally told me that he will not support Donald Trump in any capacity. There's a sort of there's a sort of peace right now between Donald Trump and him. Trump has not been publicly attacking him. It would be interesting if that's actually beneficial for Hogan at some point, if he can go more toe to toe with Trump publicly. Uh, but he faces an uphill battle. That being said, when he left office, he had some of the highest approval ratings for any governor in the country. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that Maryland was so much to the left that they would bring things that didn't really strike a good chord with moderates and Hogan would veto them. And by for the process of vetoing them, the, the legislation would become more moderate, even though it was a veto proof legislature. So it'll be a very interesting race. He's not your typical Republican. He's pro funding for Ukraine. He absolutely wants a bipartisan immigration bill. Maryland is a majority minority state, uh, has over 1 million foreign born residents. So he's somebody that if, if there is a Republican mold like that, it certainly would probably win this presidential race uh, and could be more beneficial in the future. But they don't seem to have gone in that direction for quite a long time. Host and creative director of MSNBC Live, Luke Russert. Thank you very much, Luke. You've made me very happy. Thank you. Uh, I can't for wait being to on. see you, Mika. Yeah. Take care. All right. You too.